Hello and welcome back to Planet Stronghold Colonial Defense, and let's do some more team talk. Incidentally, is it just me or does team talk sound like something that should be on a sports program? Upon entering the room, you look for a place to sit. Xavier, Rigel and Lola are engaged in a heavy conversation, talking with... Talk, talking whether kinetic meteor strikes count as overwhelming power or overkill. I'd say that should be discussing rather than talking, but that's just me. Mario is sitting with them, but he glances thoughtfully in your direction, rubbing a hand along his jaw. Is everything alright, Mario? You've been glancing my way for close to a half hour. Don't tell me I have a breakout of zits. I don't know. Sounds like a perfectly reasonable waste of time. It's not that, Captain. You just remind me of someone I had the pleasure of serving under. Oh my. Do I detect the hints of a forbidden romance? Xavier gives a slight yelp, and he rubs his shin with his left hand. Rigel gives an innocent smile, and Lola arches an eyebrow at the two. It wasn't like that, Xavier. But if you don't cut it out, you'll find I can make a coffin as readily as a bunker. Nothing wrong with May-December romances. I'd rather someone with experience than, so than teaching someone the ropes. It also depends on how good your knot work is. Lola gestures with her hands as if she was leading someone with a leash. Okay... Mario, who was this commander? Sabrina Nelson. Share the same last name, but, well, Nelson isn't exactly an uncommon name. Could be. Nana married late after mustering out the military. N Nana? <laughs> I'm having a hard time picturing Captain Battleaxe as Nana. That's a rather rude thing to call your superior commander. Actually, if I remember from the archives, it would be rather appropriate. It was before my time as well, but I remember the men saying she got it during the Unification Wars. One fight, everything came down to hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and, well, someone buried an axe deep in her shoulder blade. She still has that axe. Every Christmas, she'd use it to chop down a tree. <laughs> Made for an interesting addition to our dress uniforms. In place of a sword, she was granted dispensation to carry the axe. And now you're serving under her grandchildren. <laughs> It's like your life's come full circle. So, did your grandmother talk about her time in the service? Hmm. Sometimes. Mostly to entertain us while babysitting. It made me want to follow in her footsteps, visiting all those planets around us. No, could be worse reasons to join the military. Shame so much of it involves conquering natives. What if you just have a science outpost? Sometimes the natives still want to gut you, even if you have no intention of doing more. Captain, I apologize if I kept you from your rounds. Nonsense. It was a pleasant distraction. Let's talk to Mitsuki. Well, that dress is fairly see-through, isn't it? Mitsuki, have you ever played Nocturnal Requiem? Yeah? One of the best PvP games out there. Why, are you up for a game? Somehow Alicia talked me into playing and I was trying to figure out the best class to play against her. Inducting reconnaissance on a little girl. Interesting. That is a very pointy crucifix. Have you ever faced Alicia in Nocturnal Requiem? The girl is... brutal. Well, when you read Lovecraft as bedtime stories, creatures of horror don't really hold much fear. Maybe. But you haven't seen anything until you've been teabagged by a horror beyond time and space. Whoever coded that was sick. It is a time-honored tradition. I'll have a couple of words with her about it. So, are you going human or monster? I'm not sure. She says she's willing to give me a ten-minute head start. She must think you're going to do well. That's a bit patronizing, don't you think? She gave me twenty minutes. Trust me, you're gonna need it. Word of advice? Stay away from the shadows. And what's that supposed to mean? You'll find out. Shame we don't have the newest football game. Though I hope they didn't handicap Mexico's team like they did last time. I don't know how you can play that. It's the same thing from one sequel to the next. That's not true. Alright, fine. There are incremental changes, but do we really need to see the mole on the player's left butt cheek or the referee pick his nose if the game goes 20 minutes without scoring? Now, you know the referee was a simple glitch when he was supposed to throw a flag. The AI for that game was better, I grant you. 
That one was the longest it took me to figure out their algorithm. You do know it's not as much fun when you analyse such things to death. I can't help it, the game has to be truly engaging for me not to pick out its flaws. So Galenia, what did you think of The Lone Soul? Eh, it wasn't bad for a game about a psychic detective. I left me with one question though. How was he truly a psychic detective if he couldn't solve the crime by reading the other's mind? That was addressed in game, he's telekinetic not a telepath. No. It had a d dating sim aspect, it left me wondering whether ectoplasm would make for a good lubricant or not. <laughs> I'm impressed I managed to get through that line without laughing. Mm. Yeah. I'm not... Yeah, I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know the answer to that question. Oh, you hooked up with Maureen in game. She took over my body during the first playthrough. She seemed the most fun of the love interests, even if she is a ghost. So, Captain, what sort of game do you like the most? Strategy board games, especially fantasy. It's nothing like the feel of dice in your hand as you try to win. <laughs> going old school, Captain. That well, makes sense. In a virtual game, the lag's a killer once you start going between planets. Funny, I never pictured the Captain as an analogue player in a digital world. Well, I'll just set up a session or two. Okay, I forget that there are still people who prefer going retro. Still, Captain, at least you don't mind virtual games. What's your favourite genre, if I uh, may ask? Um, okay, it's definitely not sports games. It depends what I'm in the mood for. I'm probably more of an RPG guy than an FPS guy. Though I do enjoy FPS games. It's just something I've got to be in the right mood for. But I'm going to say RPG. I like something new. Something exotic. Gravitate towards role-playing games. Of course, it's always fun to push the game world until it breaks. Although, you might want to join us later. A clan in Age of Avaron is doing quite well. We're about to overthrow the resurrected Faust. Age of Avaron. More Winterwolves nepotism! Yay! You still have to resurrect my character. And not as a zombie to act as a mobile arrow shield. Oh, it's that time again. I'll see you later, Captain. It's time to harvest some salty, salty tears. These people are all insane. Though in a fun way. Hey, Captain. How's it going? Quite well, Xavier. You? Oh, someone's in trouble. Quick, call the military police. Indeed. How can we let this outrage stand? Guys, please, cut it out. Lucius, what was the typical punishment for addressing one's betters incorrectly? Historically, physical punishment, imprisonment, and even death has been done. Would anyone care to let me in on the joke? What everyone is giving Xavier a hard time for is the little fact he kept hidden from everyone. Well, everyone but me. May I be the first to introduce you to His Highness, the Duke of Brazil. Ah, I knew that flag looked familiar. Technically, Xavier would be His Grace. The Queen's children would be their Highness. My mistake. May I introduce you to His Grace, the Duke of Brazil. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. I'll have you know I'm the only heir. My father's that I'm only the heir. My father's still alive and kicking. So what would you call a duke's heir? Go on, Mitsuki. Won't be the first time I've heard it. I was going to say douche, but you took all the fun out of it. I would have gone with dookie myself. <sighs> I hope this isn't going to be an issue, but in military matters I do hold the higher rank. Trust me, Captain, if I never heard another Your Grace in my life, I would be ecstatic. One of the reasons I signed up to practically liberating. One reason? What were some of the others? I'll tell you some other time, but let's just say I feel safer here. Looks like another story. What would it take you to get you to open up? Not even all the alcohol Kristoff could brew. So am I supposed to curtsy whenever we meet Xavier? If you expect me to kneel, it'll be followed by a brick to the head. Genoflect. Pardon? Genoflect is the same as kneeling, but it is much more fun to say. Gen e flect. <laughs> Hell, maybe I should go the whole hog and make you kowtow. If you think I'm going to press my forehead to the ground, you'll find a high heel lodged up your backside. <laughs> That's enough teasing. You've had your fun. Thanks, Captain. To be honest, it could have been worse. Some people, when they find out you're noble, well, <laughs> let's just say they could be more extreme in their reactions. Uh, how do you feel about the nobility? Never really thought about it, to be honest. Hmm, they weren't on my radar that much. That's because they usually keep the intrigues well away from the military. 
royal family was quite ingenious. They could hold the public's adoration but blame the nobility when things go wrong. Divide and conquer. Ladies, gentlemen, I'm going to leave you to your political discussions. Farewell, Captain. Right, so we've done three, so let's do the last of those side missions. Dragon Outpost by surprise. Do some assistance, so... Okay, let's get... Can we... Yes, we can afford to send in both the sharpshooter and the marksman team, who have the advantage of being cloaked. Unfortunately, they'll have to destroy that turret before they can do much. But I can at least deploy everything I've got initially. Okay, you take cover. Take cover. And fire. Good job. You take that cannon out. Let's get some extra stuff in the turn. Okay, you unfortunately can't hit that turret without taking, you know, fatal damage, which is annoying. But between you, you can destroy it, so... Kill it. Ah, oh, she's still alive, excellent. They're stuck attacking the wall for the moment, so I can deploy a laser turret. And then everybody hit the Draiden. He's most of the way gone already. And everybody, fire. Nice, straightforward, simple, easy. And what was the thing I was upgrading? It was the battle cannon turret, wasn't it? So the, it's currently at silver, I need it up to gold level. So I'll need an additional star for that, which is fine. Because if I can get those doing two damage on every hit, that'll make them obviously twice as good. Laser turrets, you know, same basic principle. Flame turret turrets, yeah. Did laser turrets by any chance? Yes, they do double damage to robotic enemies, okay. So the cannon turrets are your basic ones. Flamethrower turrets do double damage to organic and those do double damage to robotic. Okay, that makes sense. Back to the team talk. Let's talk to Maria Petris. Maria, can I borrow your 3D printer for um, about an hour tonight? As long as you aren't making knockoff chronometers again, then certainly. No worries about that, my clothes are getting a bit threadbare. I want to preserve the ones I got from Earth. And could your desire for a new wardrobe come from seeing the latest fashions out of Paris? Well, I won't deny that there were a few things which caught my eye. He seems to be slipping into a French accent, but I'm okay with that. It's not consistent, but hey, my voice work never is. <sighs> I shake my head every time I see such clothes. It makes me wonder just what the designers are trying to accomplish. That's the thing, Captain. They aren't meant to be practical. <laughs> in fact, no one in their right mind would buy such an outfit. Exactly. They are meant to showcase the designer's talent. Keep his name relevant. Oh, so they look like human peacocks? Still, you do see models parading them around galas and such. Once again, they are people trying to stay in the public eye, even if it makes them look ridiculous. Well, the one I saw last night, I almost had to cover up Alicia's eyes. I didn't think that was a backside, at least until a string lit up. Ah, uh, the good old turd cutter. So named because if you had an accident, well... Well, I don't really need to draw your picture. And another had a hat which could eclipse the sun. If you were trying to cover your face, it'd be perfect. And there seemed to be something which you liked, Kristoff. Indeed. I saw the cut of this jacket, and it would go great when I go clubbing. I hope you mean that in the party sense. It is always a party when I bring my crowbar. Although I'm going to change the colour. Rhinestones and Chartreuse don't go well together. Wait, you're going to wear rhinestones? I'm getting a headache just picturing that. Not me. The jacket. It was Chartreuse and had rhinestones. Go ahead and use the printer, Kristoff, though I can't say the resulting clothes will be all that good. I prefer natural fabrics myself. Yes, but until we start bringing in sheep, we have to make do with what we can extract. It's not just clothing. Have you tried to sleep on the sheets? I think I'd get more rest if I slept on straw. Right, that's a reasonable point to end this part. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next.